Uh, thank you to both speakers. Uh, we now have uh, questions or comments from the floor. I think there are some. I'd imagine at least there will be some around the place. Uh, and then we've got because there's a couple of things in there. Disagree on. Start with that and see this um, obviously, um, president. Uh, no, it's fine. Um, obviously, with presidents, elected presidents, um, if they end up get well, sort of in times of crisis, and they are for whatever reason <coughs> impeached, um, kicked out of office. Um, if that's your head of state, presumably that is going to shake confidence in the country. But if, say, uh, if we kicked out Cameron, whoever, but should, uh, would you not agree that the monarchy offers some form of stability in a time of crisis that an elected official can't? Well, I, I, don't, I don't see that. So it's the moment, to be honest with you. I mean, if you look at, if you look at this country, we've got, we've got regional divide. I mean, Scotland wants independence. The Queen is a very powerful symbol for division in Lord Ireland. Um, so much so we don't go there, to be honest. Um, we've got, we've got uh, social divides on the increase. The, the fact is there are no two republics in the world that are the same, but basically they fall into um, two models. One where the president takes an active role in the political process, and we can think of America and Italy, uh, where that happens. And there are and there are presidents where it's largely a constitutional role, uh, a ceremonial role, but there's some important constitutional uh, issues, and, and Germany and Ireland are, are very good examples of that. It's been quoted to me that uh, there was some scandal around the German uh, president uh, last year, and, and he was found out, and, and, and there was, he had to take the consequences. Well, that's, that's a positive thing out of that. That's a positive thing, that he, that he was found out and had to, had to move aside or whatever. It, the fact is that when our when our royals mess up, as they do frequently, and Prince Andrew is still doing it, well, as, as of uh, two days ago, he's uh, still thinking he's in his trade envoy role, which he was sacked from two years ago, and uh, still talking to some very dodgy people. We brush it under the carpet, and that is clearly not a healthy situation. You know, it's, it's not a healthy situation that um, the Attorney General comes out and says, the, the people of Britain, you're not allowed to know what Charles is getting involved with. It's, it's, it's too confidential, and it's going to affect his role if you know about it. That's not a healthy situation. Yeah, it's a very, Drew, a very good distinction. I know the Republic don't um, favour an executive head of state. They, they favour one where, um, in fact, actually, the very similar role to what our monarch would have, except elected. Um, he, he also mentioned Italy, and the trouble with Italy is that it is a very good example of um, a country where, allegedly, the head of state, uh, after the king, uh, the, they had, the, the king of Italy got into quite a lot of trouble in 1946. They got rid of him, they, they replaced him with their head of state. He was supposed to have no power. But we all know what politicians are like. They're power-maximizing individuals, and that's always the way they will be. And the simple fact of the matter is that the president of Italy has slowly, through clever, the clever tricks that politicians use, gained more power to the extent where in 1982, President uh, Ciampi uh, basically forced the government uh, to resign, and it, and it creates a, a problem um, ha by having this elected head of state that Tony Benn actually highlighted, of all people, um, that you get, and it's the reason that he's actually recently come out um, not, not supporting uh, the Republican model, you get this dual mandate issue, uh, which is deeply uh, unstable constitu in constitutional terms, where you have two people who both claim a mandate, and what happens in times of crisis? I think it's a real issue, at least with the, you know, with the Queen. Um, you know, I think not being elected gives her a real sort of sensitivity um, to, to getting involved and makes her reluctant to use her power, which is exactly what the head of state should be. They should be reluctant to use their power. Uh, John? Um, question to both of you. Um, do you believe that we are attached, if we are attached to the monarch of the nation, is it the monarch we are attached to or Elizabeth? Well, it's a good question. I mean, there's no doubt that Elizabeth II is a, 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 sorry, a Queen Elizabeth II. I keep getting in trouble from monarchists. I keep getting emails. I call her Elizabeth II. It's sort of a habit, and they always email me with cross, you know, with some strange, strange people, and they keep emailing me saying, you must call her Queen Elizabeth II. Um, so I must call her Queen Elizabeth, or I, I, sovereign by the grace of God. And there is no doubt that she is very popular. Um, but having said that, uh, there is a great deal of support the monarchy. Alongside that, I mean, there are regular opinion polls. You can go and look them up. Um, 
which have support for the monarchy uh, about about 80 85 uh, percent. Um, and I think that comes from two reasons. One is no doubt that people don't like politicians very much and um, uh, are fairly convinced that if we got rid of the Queen, there would be a politician, not President Beckham or whoever you suggest. Uh, but the other one is, is that there is a, just a sense of national uh, identity and uh, patriotism uh, wrapped up into it, uh, where people see uh, supporting the monarchy and the monarchy is an important part of our political identity and our historical identity. It ties us in with the Commonwealth as well. Bearing in mind, not only is the Queen head of the Commonwealth for 54 countries, but 15 other countries have the Queen as our head of the state as well. So I think no doubt that the Queen plays a significant role in the monarchy's uh, popularity. Um, but as itself, it is no doubt a popular institution as well. Well, um, there's no doubt that the Queen does have a lot of allegiance. She's been there a very long time, much more than most people have been alive. Um, and I don't think she's been there because uh, she hasn't dropped her foot in it in any way, but she hasn't said anything or done anything very contentious. I mean, she did a, a trip to Ireland, was it last year or the year before? I think the most contentious thing she said, it was a, it was a roaring success, this trip, by the way. The most contentious thing she did was, was decline her point of gears. Um, Scott keeps going on about po politicians. Look, um, in, in the case of Ireland, there have been recent occurrences where all the political parties have got behind one nomination. It's been a multi-party support for one nomination. Mary McAleese was returned with no opposition. She was so popular. So don't keep going on about politicians. We know. In fact, in my way, politicians would be banned from standing. MPs or anybody who stood as a councillor or MP in this country. It's something I'm going to put to our national executive this year for a vote to try and get it into our legislation. Anybody who's pinned there, nobody's apolitical. Not even the Queen's apolitical. We know because we've had people there. We know what she comes out with. It's all hidden. But if you pin your banner to very deliberately to a political party, I don't see how you can then be an apolitical uh, or non-aligned uh, head, head of state. Um, the, que the, the Queen does get a lot of support. William gets a lot of support. Now, confusingly for most monarchists, we can give them William tomorrow. You just have to vote for him. The problem is we've got Charles in the way. And not even monarchists want to talk about Charles. No monarchists want to talk about Charles. He's an absolute disaster. Oh, well, that's not I wouldn't true. put that guy in charge of the garden, to be honest with you. Right. Right. Um, so, so monarchists, we don't, we don't go into individuals. It's the, it's the institution we have a problem with. It's the monarchists who will, and it, they have some very strange rules on who's, who's suitable and who isn't. And it's normally how they look. So Diamond was very suitable because she looked good. In fact, when Charles used to get out of the car on his own, he used to get booed. Or, or, and he used to apologise, it's only me today. Kate, Kate's popular because she looks good. William looks good. Camilla isn't popular, she doesn't look very good. Charles doesn't. You know, it's a very, very superficial judgement. You know, yeah. it, it's, 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 it's absolutely sickening how, how pathetically shallow it is, to be honest with you. And it's, and it's perpetrated by a media. Well, I mean, people will always have personal uh, views on different individuals, but you know, in a, in a republic, that the same would apply. Presidents of republics will often be disliked by many of the people, and will never have uh, the unanimous, unanimous support of the population. I dare say, never, with the 85% to 90% approval rating uh, of the Queen. And you know, this idea that well, Prince awesome. Charles is really unpopular, I don't buy at all. There's no doubt there are certain publications that uh, like to support uh, an anti-Charles agenda. But I mean, you know, the man's done um, a huge amount to help numerous charities, including the remarkable Prince's Trust, which I think is a, a great charity. And certainly, if I, I don't speak to many people who think that Prince Charles is a... And I do speak to other people than just an inner circle of monarchists. <laughs> um, uh, it, I, and uh, I, it's very rare that you find someone who is deeply, deeply anti-Prince Charles. Um, it, I, I think it's just, I think it's a, it's fucking a dead horse, this anti-Prince Charles stuff, I think. The professor of Texas to University who lost his job because of Prince Charles isn't very keen on him. Well, I'm, I'm sure I can find another person in America who's keen on Obama. Yes, they're going to have a quick comeback and then I'll take another question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just, just on the Queen's popularity, I mean, you know, the two days before the Jubilee, 33% of the population said they would would be um, uh, celebrating the Jubilee, 51% said they were not. Yes, there were a million people on the streets of London, and we, we were there as well, you know, uh, protesting. A million people on the streets is not unusual for, a, for an event in London. It, it ranks alongside the Notting Hill Carnival, uh, the Gay Pride March, 
four million people left the country that weekend. Now, amazingly, our media weren't at the airport asking people whether we're leaving the country. Maybe they should have done. You may have got a slight different view. You know, if you only go to royal parties and ask people what they think of the Queen, you're only going to get one response, aren't you? I mean, is that obvious or not? 